Logan Ninefingers, the man who wants to change. A character study. There will be spoilers for the First Law trilogy. So it's like raining outside right next to this window, and I really hope that it comes out in post-production. But if it doesn't, I hope you guys enjoy this nice little ambience we got going on. And, and and back to the video. In the First Law series, Logan is one of our most memorable and likable characters. Which is funny, because he might also be one of our darkest. A battle-hardened warrior whose greatest motivation when this series starts is simply to survive. Our introduction to Logan leaves many details about who he really is to our own imagination. There are hints and small pieces of information given throughout the trilogy, but it really isn't until the third book that we see him for who he truly is. The first book, The Blade itself, begins with Logan on the run, fleeing for his life through the woods with rabid Shanka hot on his trail. He's separated from his group and assumed to be dead after soaring off a cliff plummeting down to the waters below. Thus begins his journey to meeting the first of the Magi, Baez, who convinces Logan to travel south with him to visit Adwa. There, a world of luxury and safety exists that Logan can't possibly understand. Logan is a fish out of water. He's been on the run for long enough that his only overarching goal is to simply stay alive which is echoed throughout the series in the way that he's constantly whispering to himself and others, still alive. The first book actually sees Logan sidelined for much of it, despite him being a major point of view character, even as the opening chapter is actually his, and he sees a good deal of action throughout. But most of his time in the first entry is simply spent establishing his character. The most dangerous man in the North, nicknamed the Bloody Nine, doing everything he can to run from his past and begin anew. It's clear that he's not the man that he once was, despite us as readers not really having any clue what it is that he once was. At this point, all we know is that he's one scary dude, and he's still quite capable of letting that scary dude out if circumstances become dire enough. But until then, he's actually dead set on avoiding anything resembling conflict. He even shows a great deal of humanity when he carries the wizard's apprentice across many miles, wounded and sick, refusing to leave the kid behind. At the end of the first book, he can almost feel like your favorite character. Sure, he's done some bad things in the past, but he's older now. We pity him. He's lost everything that he's ever loved. At that point, as a reader, I just wanted him to be happy. However, book one doesn't make much progress on that front. It's in book two, before they are hanged, that we actually start to get some forward motion. This book sees the merry band of Logan, the wizard Baz, the showy swordsman from Adwa who's also a whiny brat, and Pharaoh, an ex-slave with an insufferable temperament full of vitriol, who's only interested in revenge, which means killing as many Gurkish people as she can, all setting off for the edge of the world. They're in search of a magical weapon that can give the Union and Adwa an upper hand in the coming wars. This is where Logan's best side comes out. He's in the middle of nowhere with a group of people that he's only just met, and it feels like it's his responsibility to try and keep them from each other's throats. Despite their sour demeanors, Logan takes it upon himself to be the only one in the group that isn't at odds with anyone. He works his way past their hard shells to become something of a big brother to the group. He cooks and tells stories. By all appearances, Logan is a man that you can cheer for. This is how Joe Abercrombie manipulates the reader, and he does this with countless characters across the trilogy. Of all the viewpoint characters, Logan has the makings of a fan favorite. But things start to change when the third and final book, The Last Argument of Kings, begins. As we head towards the climax of this trilogy, Logan finds himself back in Adwa. The band is breaking up, as their quest to the edge of the world turned out to be all for nothing. Logan has a choice. He can go back north and fight Bithod, the king of the north that's making war on the south, or he could fade into obscurity and try to settle down and live out the rest of his life. But it really doesn't seem like much of a choice to him. So with little deliberation, he leaves the companions that he's grown to care at least a little bit for, and rejoins the armies fighting against Bithod to take back the north. This book is all about war, especially for Logan. As soon as he meets up with the army, Carnage isn't far behind. 
Logan quickly realizes that he might have made a mistake in coming back. In the North, everyone knows his name, and most of them fear it. This is where we learn in better detail about Logan's mysterious past, where he used to actually fight for the very man, Bethod, who he's trying to take down now. It actually turns out that a great deal of Northerners have a bone to pick with Logan. He's killed a lot of brothers, fathers, uncles, and the like. It's only really his terrifying girth and prowess in a fight that keeps him from being attacked on the spot by members of his own camp. Everyone has got a score to settle. You see, when Logan was in unfamiliar territory with people he didn't know in the earlier books, he had something of a fresh start. A chance to be different. But now, in his old stomping grounds, surrounded by men that could never see him as anything more than a ruthless killer, it becomes harder to go back. Almost as if he's not allowed to be that big brother. Logan asks, do you think a man can ever really change? He's struggling with what circumstances require of him and the man he really wants to be. Around every corner is just a reminder of his past. It's here that he starts to lose control, and the themes of this trilogy wrap their hands around the neck of this character. See, throughout the trilogy, characters beg to change, to do the right thing, but it's not so easy. It's not like the stories we've been told. Not a linear path. Just when you think a character deserves to finally win, they often fall again, burying their face further in the mud. Logan is at a dangerous crossroads. The Union army that he fights with need him to be the killer that he once was, but each step he takes in that direction revives his past self. Logan cannot both be the man that he wants to be and the man that he used to be. He has to make a choice, but... This book does not give its characters many choices. Often, their hands are forced, and that's really what happens to Logan here. His hand is forced, and this leads to places that we never wanted to see him go. The Bloody Nine begins to take control and doesn't let go. We're forced to watch the man that we've been rooting for sink into madness, committing horrible, unforgivable acts. Like fratricide on the battlefield, as he's sometimes unable to distinguish friend from foe when the fog of war sets in. Logan has very few real friends, and even those relationships walk a very tight rope. So when he murders a longtime companion and even a child in his battle rage, the distance between the reader and character grows ever wider. And it hurts. We've come to love this character, to pity him, to yearn for his salvation. But there comes a point where he may be too far gone. When Logan finally defeats the feared, overthrowing Bethod and becoming king of the north, he falls back into his old ways with the growing sentiment that it might be too late to go back. If his own men are scared of him, so be it. If the people only see him as the Bloody Nine, if that's what they want, that's what he'll give them. This is the understandable yet heartbreaking turn of the final book. The trilogy has unfolded and Logan is right back where he was before it began. So much has happened, but little has changed. It begins to feel like Logan is just a product of his environment. Like Logan has no choice but to be this way, and it's heartbreaking. Logan's theme of this trilogy can be summed up in book three when he asks, Tell me, Furious, do you reckon a man has to pay for the things he's done? Logan Ninefingers is full of brilliant character work, keeping you on your toes at every turn. Abercrombie knows just how to make you feel deeply for a character, to yearn for their victory. But the way that Abercrombie refuses to give you a simple victorious end cuts to the core. It's not just that Logan struggles to change. He struggles with knowing the atrocities he's committed, knowing that the only way to pay for them is with his life. By the looks of it, Logan really doesn't deserve to get out of this alive. There's enough humanity in him to know what he deserves, but also to live in fear of it. Thus is the tragedy of Logan Ninefingers, the man who wanted to change. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this character study. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a comment below and let me know how you're enjoying this type of content. Otherwise, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe on the video. It helps me out a ton and I will see you guys in the next video.